Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Limuel E. Hernandez, your Pinoy math teacher. In decision making, we use statistics although some of us may not be aware of it. In this lesson, I will make you realize that to decide logically, you have to use statistics. An inquiry could be answered or a problem could be solved using statistics. In fact, without knowing it, we use statistics in our daily activities. You may be familiar with probability and statistics through TV, radio, newspapers, Facebook, and other social media apps on your phone. For example, you may have read statements like the following. Nearly 2 in 7 Filipino children were raised from a broken family. By the year 2080, the female population will be thrice as many as the male population. Eating 10 grams of fiber a day reduces the risk of heart attack by 14%. Most Filipino brides prefer a church wedding rather than a beach wedding. Thirty minutes of exercise two or three times each week can raise HDLs or high density lipoprotein or good cholesterol by ten percent to fifteen percent. How did they come up with those statements? The answer statistics. Statistics is defined as a science that studies data to be able to make a decision. Hence, it is a tool in decision-making process. Statistics is the science of conducting studies to collect, organize, summarize, analyze, and draw conclusions from data. One also needs to interpret and communicate the results of the methods identified to support a decision that one makes when faced with a problem or an inquiry. Every day, we make decisions that may be personal, business-related, or of some other kind. Usually, these decisions are made under conditions of uncertainty. Many times, the situations or problems we face in the real world have no precise or definite solution. Statistical methods help us make scientific and intelligent decisions in such situations. Decisions made by using statistical methods are called educated guesses. Decisions made without using statistical or scientific methods are pure guesses and hence may prove to be unreliable. For example, opening a large store in an area with or without assessing the need for it may affect its success. Students study statistics for several reasons. Like professional people, you must be able to read and understand the various statistical studies performed in your fields. To have this understanding, you must be knowledgeable about the vocabulary, symbols, concepts, and statistical procedures used in these studies. You may be called on to conduct research in your field since statistical procedures are basic to research. To accomplish this, you must be able to design experiments, collect, organize, analyze, and summarize data. 
and possibly make reliable predictions or forecasts for future use. You must also be able to communicate the results of the study in your own words. You can also use the knowledge gained from studying statistics to become better consumers and citizens. For example, you can make intelligent decisions about what products to purchase based on consumer studies, about government spending based on utilization studies, and so on. To gain knowledge about seemingly haphazard situations, statisticians collect information for variables which describe the situation. Let us consider this class recording sheet that I have prepared. I compiled all my previous students' responses and compiling all these records from everyone in the class is an example of a census since data has been gathered from every student in class. The government through the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA conducts censuses to obtain information about social demographic characteristics of the residents of the country. Census data are used by the government to make plans such as how many schools and hospitals to build, etc. The information that I ask from my students are referred to as the variables of the study. And in this recording sheet, you see that we have 12 variables including class student number. This is the number that I have provided confidentially to the student at the start of the class. A variable is a characteristic that is observable or measurable in every unit of the universe. From each student, we got his or her biological sex, number of siblings. So this is the number of brothers and sisters that my student has in their immediate family. The weight, this refers to my student's weight based on their knowledge. Note that the weight must be reported in kilograms. Height. This refers to my student's height based on their knowledge. Note that the height must be reported in centimeters. Age of mother. This refers to the age of my student's mother's in years as of her last birthday. Thus, this number should be reported in whole number. Usual daily allowance in school. So this refers to the usual amount in pesos that the student is provided for when he or she goes to school in a weekday. Note that the student can give zero as a response for this item in case he or she has no monetary allowance per day. Usual daily food expenditure in school. This refers to the usual amount in pesos that my student spends for food including drinks in school per day. Note that the student can give zero as response for this item in case he or she does not spend for food in school. Usual number of text messages sent in a day. This refers to the usual number of text messages that my student sends in a day. Note that the student can give zero as response for this item in case he or she does not have the gadget to use to send a text message or simply he or she does not send text messages. Most preferred color. I let my students choose only one color that could be considered his most preferred among the given choices. Usual sleeping time. This refers to the usual sleeping time at night during a typical weekday or school day. I told them that the time is to be reported using the military way of reporting the time or the 24-hour clock and happiness index for the day. The student has to respond on how he or she feels at that time using codes from 1 to 10. Code 1 refers to the feeling that he or she is very unhappy while code 10 refers to a feeling that he or she is very happy on the day when the data are being collected. Since these characteristics are observable in every student of the class, then these are referred to as variables. Now this collection of numbers, figures, symbols, and words is called data. Data are facts and figures that are presented 
collected and analyzed. These are either numeric or non-numeric and must be contextualized. To contextualize data, we must identify its six W's. Or to put meaning on the data, we must know the following W's of the data. Who? Who provided the data? What? What are the information from the respondents and what is the unit of measurement used for each of the information, if there are any? When? When was the data collected? Where? Where was the data collected? Why? Why was the data collected? And how? How was the data collected? The collection of respondents from whom one obtains the data is called the universe of the study. In our illustration, the set of students of this statistics and probability class is our universe. A universe is not necessarily composed of people, since there are studies where the observations were taken from plants or animals or even from non-living things like buildings vehicles, farms, etc. So formally, we define universe as the collection or set of units or entities from whom we got the data. Thus, this set of units answers the first double use of data contextualization. The set of all possible values of a variable is referred to as a population. Thus, for each variable we observe, we have a population of values. The number of population in a study will be equal to the number of variables observed. In the data collection activity we had, there are 12 populations corresponding to 12 variables. A subgroup of a universe or of a population is a sample. There are several ways to take sample from a universe or a population. And the way we draw the sample dictates the kind of analysis we do with our data. Following up with the concept of variable. Variables can be broadly classified as either qualitative or quantitative with the latter further classified into discrete and continuous. Qualitative variables express a categorical attribute such as sex, so male or female, religion, marital status, region of residence, highest educational attainment. Qualitative variables do not strictly take on numeric values although we can have numeric codes for them. Example, for sex variable, 1 and 2 may be referred to male and female respectively. Qualitative data answer questions what kind. Sometimes, there is a sense of ordering in qualitative data. Example, income data group into high, middle, and low income status. Data on sex or religion do not have the sense of ordering, as there is no such thing as a weaker or stronger sex, and a better or worse religion. Qualitative variables are sometimes referred to as categorical variables. Quantitative, otherwise called numerical data, whose sizes are meaningful, answer questions such as how much or how many. Quantitative variables have actual units of measure. Examples of quantitative variables include the height, weight, number of registered cars, household size, and total household expenditures. Quantitative data may be further classified into discrete and continuous. Discrete data are those data that can be counted. Examples are the number of days for cell phones to fail, 
the ages of survey respondents measured to the nearest year, and the number of patients in a hospital. These data assume only countable number of values. Continuous data are those that can be measured. Examples are the exact height of a survey respondent and the exact volume of some liquid substance. The possible values are uncountably infinite. Let us try to classify the 12 variables that I use in data gathering activity. Class student number is qualitative, though I use numbers as representations. These actually don't have actual units of measure. Sex is also qualitative as this is not a numerical data. Number of siblings is quantitative because this is a numerical data. It may be further classified as discrete because the data can be counted. Weight is quantitative because this has an actual units of measure and may be further classified as continuous because the data can be measured. Same goes with height. This is quantitative and continuous. Age of mother is also quantitative. It can be further classified as discrete because the age can be counted. Usual daily allowance in school is quantitative data and further classified as discrete data because you can count his or her daily allowance. Usual daily food expenditure in school is also quantitative and discrete data. Usual number of text messages sent in a day is a variable that can be classified as quantitative and discrete because you can count the given data, not measured. Usual sleeping time is qualitative because you do not have to count or measure the given data. Most preferred color is not numerical data, so this is qualitative. Happiness index for the day is qualitative because the numbers that I use are just numeric codes.